Hello, everyone. Um, I haven't been um, that well for the past seven weeks. I've had a bit of a chest infection. And those of you who can hear that uh, my voice is uh, a bit gravelly and still, and still, it's still coming off the chest. It's been a long one, and so there I haven't done uh, too many videos. Um, but I, I feel up to it today, even though the throat is hurting a bit, uh, because I've been really wanting to um, demonstrate a bit of m moving into d different kinds of signification uh, and use some horary techniques by looking at the event chart for tonight, uh, tonight's vote in the House of Commons. It's Tuesday the 15th, 2019, and at 7 o'clock tonight, uh, the Houses of uh, Common will be voting to, for Theresa May's Brexit deal, so, or so-called deal. In fact, it's, it's nothing really of the kind except a, a kind of arrangement with the uh, EU to deal with things uh, further on down the road. In, in many ways, it kicks the can down the road and, and, and tries to uh, deal with the problems uh, later on. Well, this is a very well-known tactic from the EU, uh, very used to fudging things. Um, for example, all referendums that have been uh, um, taken, France, uh, various other places, I think Ireland, uh, all, all the referendums for the past 15 years in different countries have been reversed by machinations from the EU, by rewording things uh, and, and so on, you know, like the Maastricht Treaty and so on. Anyway, so uh, I don't want to go particularly too much into the politics, although it's important to see um, see charts in context. Tonight I'm just going to look at an event chart, an event for the vote, to see if we can um, see anything within it and indicate a few of the rules, if you like, of horary which can be applied to events. Um, and it's important to remember that when we're looking at charts like this, it is the mind of the astrologer which assigns the meaning of the chart. If it's the chart of an individual, then we say that that, that has something relevant to, 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 to connect to the individual's life, whether that's their psychic structure or whether that's their fate in many ways or the energies that uh, pertain to them and or, or the events in their life. depends on which kind of um, channel you want to uh, view your assignation, if you like, when you, when you assign something to a horoscope, it's in the mind of the astrologer that assigns it. So the origin, if you like, of, um, uh, of what a chart means happens within the uh, framework of the mind chart meeting and in, in the imposing in imposing a meaning on a chart, then we look further into that chart to see if it's valid. Now, it, it, so an event in, in many ways is like an inaugural event. It is an inauguration. It's the beginning of something. It's a Kairos moment where, um, or we hope that when we cast a chart for an event, that within that horoscope, we would start to see the uh, drama and the participants and the things unfolding within that chart. That's what a, a deeper signification is. Um, or, you see, orrery or uh, these kind of things are more like divinatory um, uh, oracles in a way. We, we, we look into the symbolism and see if they speak to us. So that's what we're going to do today to look at the event chart. And I'd like to uh, enter it within this spirit of experimentation to see if there's anything in it. And I also wanted to do it before the vote to see if some of the timings on this uh, uh, horoscope, which are indicated on it, actually work out in practice. And to see whether these symbolisms do come alive within the actual imaginations and the drama and the scenarios that will be going on in the evening. Now, there are one or two things I want to uh, mention. Obviously, Theresa May is involved and uh, the EU is involved and the opposition is involved. And there are all these um, uh, participants, if you like, within it. I don't expect them to be all there in the horoscope. But um, I, what I've decided to do is take as a, a line, a general idea, taken from horary astrology, where, where you have a matter of two choices. 
And uh, let's say, let's take the Cambridge and Oxford boat race, which I, which I try to do every year. You have the challenger and you have the victor for last year. And the challenger is always shown by, if you set up a chart for a race or a, um, an election uh, with two people or a, a competition of some kind or a boxing match or, the, you know, tennis match, the, where two, two, two are, uh, uh, participants, the challenger is always shown by the seventh house. And the, the incumbent, the, the president or the, uh, the, the champion is always shown by the first house. And so the challenger is opposing that. So here we have that the first house is going to be represented, uh, representative of the uh, vote itself. And what, what is called in the House of Commons the eyes lobby or the yeses, you know, I, I, A, Y, E, but also can see it as eyes that which sees uh, sees the vote, I suppose. So, so there's a kind of play or a pun, a similarity of word sounds there with the word I. And um, and the no lobby, uh, which represents the, the, the blockage of the vote, the, the, the block vote. Now, it's been said by all the punters, a lot of the punters and the news people and various commentaries on social media and on YouTube and so on, a lot of people say that uh, Theresa May is going to lose the vote. I don't think we're going to look in astrology and to see if we, we need to tell that to you. That, that's, that's unimportant. What we're doing here is trying to look at the symbolism and see if we can start to move into this imaginative world of astrology and apply signification to see if the planetary positions actually begin to tell us something about the situation, you see, to, to see the coloration. So there will be the eyes lobby, which will be represented by the, the that's the vote for uh, the uh, Brexit uh, negotiation deal. And um, the uh, uh, against, if you like, would be represented by the seventh house. Uh, Theresa May is a couple of interesting things. Theresa May herself is a Libra, so there is this uh, always sense with her of trying to find the middle ground. She's a uh, what is called a one conservative uh, Tory, and um, uh, I could go into that in detail, and I may do that in subsequent videos. I want to do one on the EU, for example, because the MC of the EU, or EU Treaty 1993, um, has a two degree Taurus on the um, MC. And Uranus will soon be coming up to this in uh, 2019. It's not so long away now. It's still around about 28 degrees Aries, but it will be moving into that soon, which represents some kind of disruption to the power uh, base uh, of it because the 10th house is always um, uh, what is at the top of the chart you see what what is uh, um, it's it's how we are seen in in the public eye it's how it's our outer office it's our outer home so often represents the persona or the profession or the place of honor oh, represents the judge for example in a court case uh, in in honorary astrology and in a mundane astrology, it always represents the party in power, which is quite interesting. Uh, I think in an event chart, it doesn't, because the party in power is obviously going to be the um, to do with the ascendant more. And then the opposition, uh, again, there's a tendency to see it as the seventh house. But I just wanted to divide the seventh and in, into the yes votes or the no votes, which is, isn't it, to a certain extent, the block vote. So um, that's what we're going to uh, look at today. And, and, you know, the EU is hotting up. Uh, Pluto is on its Uranus-Neptune uh, uh, conjunction, which Lynn Bell uh, put out as a, 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 a utopic ideological dream. She um, did a, a pretty good lecture uh, at the AA conference this year on Taurus and Uranus moving into Taurus. Um, and she calls it that because of, there's a Uranus-Neptune conjunction in, in Capricorn, which Pluto is going over. So there's going to be grand changes uh, and um, movements, transformations taking place. There's, a, there's, there's something coming out from the underworld, I think, um, and, and, and breaking down or breaking through this ideological dream. It was in Capricorn uh, in 93. I did a lecture on it uh, mentioning the spirit of Prometheus uh, connected to this as if there's change and future looking. But the Neptunian elements are often so dreamlike and um, um, 
uh, they seem to take us into a realm where where everything is fixed. It's the kind of Garden of Eden planet, which promises more we can actually fulfil in the material realm. Uranus often represents ideal, ideology. And the conjunction of these, as I say, this is why Lynn talks about the ideological dream of the union being a kind of conglomerate or a, a, a corporate mass, a very Capricornian entity, which um, which has a both a matriarchal and a, and a, and a patriarchal um, structure to it, and everybody uh, then obeys, or, or, or the the lesser lights of the lesser nations come into that structure, and so therefore are sub subordinated I I into it, losing their national identity, losing their borders, losing their sense of themselves, and, and, and all being brought under the banner of this circle of stars that is the um, European uh, Union flag. And so and they, at least that, that was the dream uh, coming much more into reality. The dream started actually at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, to, with the pan Europa movement, but um, and and all those ideas filtered through. The the idea was to get rid of wars and to get rid of this uh, nationalism, which has so uh, subverted the the, the course of uh, integration in Europe. And so you got the integrationists on one hand, but it, the, the problem is with integration, it isn't so much that it's a kind of fusion of national identities and a breakdown of borders. And um, you, there's lots of conspiracy theories about this, and you can see them online. Um, I've talked about uh, this as a, a Neptunian force versus a Uranian force now, um, because Uranus is in when it hit Aries, there's the beginning of rebellion. When Uranus was on the um, uh, ascendant of the um, UK chart, the 1066 chart, that's when we split apart. That's when we, we voted out or, or leave, leaving the uh, European Union or the common agricultural and common uh, policies um, within the common market. Okay, so I'm now going to share with you this chart. So... Let's uh, see if I can bring it up here. And I hope this is a chart that you can now all see. And I'm going to take you through it. Um, let's, let's uh, first of all, start with this moon placed at the top of the chart. One would think maybe that this uh, timing of the vote uh, may have even been done by an astrologer. We don't see any harsh aspects particularly apart from to the sun, which I shall come to at the moment. But the moon often represents the mover of events. Um, and you can see that's the house, if you like. Or, But generally speaking, the movement of the moon and its position uh, is, is important because if it's not well defined or fortified in a chart, then nothing much can come of it or, or difficulties come of it. But this vote is going to be pretty smooth and pretty decisive. I think Taurus likes firm lines. It likes to know where it's going. It likes definitive results. And so this moon in Taurus is exalted right on the cusp of the uh, 10th house there. So this is going to be a substantive vote, which is a very Torian word. It's going to uh, be a, a force, force the issue up. Now, as I say, all pundits have said that Theresa May is going to be, uh, Theresa May's vote is going to be voted down. Uh, uh, a deal is going to be voted down and by, by a substantial margin. Um, <clears throat> but there's something else. John Burko, the Speaker of the House, allowed an amendment uh, I think it was last week, and there was a bit of an uproar on it because he, he went against precedent in the House of Commons uh, by allowing an amendment into a motion. Now, again, uh, people that are interested in this can look on YouTube and various things about it. But the the what it did was that in the event that uh, Theresa May lost the vote, what's been forced into uh, is it he says he has uh, he. It announced that within three days, Theresa May has to come back to the uh, House of Commons and indicate what the next stage of the process is. Now, I don't want to go into whether it's going towards another referendum, when we're going to extend Article 50, or um, whether we're, we're, you know, and, uh, and all that. So these are all things that are very uncertain and unknown. But what I do know is that if this vote is... Um, is if the referendum uh, result, 17 and a half million, um, I think 52, 48, something like that. If, if that's not put 
um, into operation, there's going to be a backlash, I believe, in the countries. We had riots rioting quite a few years ago, and it spread throughout um, many of the major cities, including uh, Clapham. I was very near there when it was, when uh, when it came on last time. It, it was kind of there was wild looting and fires, and people were killed, and so on. But um, this is what Theresa May is worried about: that the leave were not being leave, but she seems to have fudged it with this deal just to kind of kick the can down the road it's not really a deal to leave there's nothing agreed and 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 by all means this is what the dwp are doing um they're they're, they're very worried um that they're going to be linked in with europe still and have to obey certain rules at the borders and so this will mean one thing for the uk and one thing for ireland and that's what the so-called backstop is about but you can see that for yourself in in other different types of video so this Taurus moon suggests a decisive vote, a very clear vote, and uh, one that needs to be substantiated. Um, here, what I've put on the ascendant here, as I say, is the IW, because that's, that's the thing being brought out. This is the government in many ways, or that element that they're putting forth. Now, on the cusp of the seventh house, which you see is Aquarius, and uh, ruled by Saturn, this is the no side, or the, the challenger. Now, this is the nose lobby, and this is the eyes lobby. And if we look at this, the ruler of the sun is in Capricorn. Now, in any kind of competition, we have to judge whether the ruler of the seventh or the ruler of the first is, is which one is gained strength, which one has more dignity, which one has uh, more um, power in the chart and more showing in the chart. And it's that one which will gain ascendancy. Well, here we can see an exact trying between the moon and Saturn. Uh, and uh, they're in a very favorable signs. This is exalted and uh, Saturn is in house or in its own sign, very powerfully placed and also in the deacon of Taurus, which is the second 10 degrees. So these two are powerfully aligned, very powerful, and only, um, what's that, uh, four or five, de five, five minutes apart. So the moon has just moved past that, and it's conjoining angle. I think this favours Saturn very much, because when we look to the sun, it's conjunction Pluto, not a particularly um, um, uh, uh, easy thing for the sun to uh, feel the, 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 the loss of itself. Pluto represents the that those elements in it which seeks to get rid of uh, what needs to be got rid of. It's the, the great uh, purger of the psyche is Pluto. And it needs to purge things out, whether that's toxins or psychological things or repressed complexes. Pluto has a lot to say about bringing that out into the open and often requires a, a descent psychologically into the underworld for our own unconscious. So the eyes then, it's interesting you know, that the sun represents the right eye and sight and so on. And the no is represented by Saturn, which is a very Saturnian word, is no. No represents blockage. It represents limit. It's, 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 a, it's a defining moment. No represents autonomy. No, I don't want to do this. Saturn in many ways is the, the planet which takes it into our own personal authority and autonomy. We take personal responsibility on the Saturn and it has to be able to say no to things as opposed to getting on with them. So it's a less community-based uh, thing, although this, the sign of uh, um, uh, community is on here, and this could so easily represent the Labour Party or a shared comradeship, which I associate with uh, union, solidarity, comradeship, and so on around about Aquarius. So we can start to see the Saturn is is representing the no, and so the chart often uh, says here that this is more clear, this is more definite. Let's have a look at the sun. Interestingly enough, the sun is square to Uranus. Not a particularly brilliant place for it, I don't think. And um, uh, what happens is, interestingly enough, in three degrees, or possibly three days, it will go to a square of Uranus. So when Theresa May loses the vote, there will be a lot of machinations, a lot of things coming out, and something within three days will present itself to disturb the status quo. 
I think uh, at, at a certain point, this disruptions of riots in Paris uh, 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 at the moment. Uh, Paris is known as the, um, uh, the, the 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 city of light, and so on. we can almost see this reflected in the the Sun Square Uranus uh, uh, in many ways. But the the, the the Uranus here is a disruptor of the status quo, and so in three days something is going to happen to uh, break apart or break through. Interesting thing is that also the Moon in three degrees will be exactly trying this um, Mercury down here which is an announcement in the House of Commons. And Mercury rules this, um, the 10th, uh, the 11th house here, which is, uh, I, I think, often a representative of those places where groups gather and clearly um, politics has to do with dialogue and communication and the sharing of information. Uh, uh, and so it's, uh, it's represented by this uh, 11th house. So I see Mercury as this moon in three days is an announcement in the House of Commons. And we must note here that Mercury is exactly here, um, it's exactly on the same degree as the Mercury in the uh, 1066 chart of England. There's another thing, is that um, if you look at the uh, new moon this month, you'll see it is in about the 15th through 16th degree of Capricorn. So this new moon uh, a degree is being hit off too. And anybody knows about eclipse points or, or no, will know that when something is triggered like this, it, it's, it's a very, very important, significant statement that is coming out tonight. This Mercury is emphasized. So what is being said, it's, con, it's conjoining the, U, uh, the 1066 chart, the uh, English uh, chart of England at 16 degrees Capricorn. Mercury is right on it. And so one would think that this actually this time here um, and this day has been elected or suggested by an astrologer. Very interesting idea that because it's a very powerful chart. So that even though May's, May's um, vote is going to go down, uh, I think she's going to be defeated. We don't know whether... Um, you know she's been fortified by um, winning the um, the vote of no confidence, and so can't be got rid of for a year. But although there's the possibility of a resignation within three days when this sun uh, squares to Uranus, we shall see. But there's going to be a big announcement as the moon progresses by three degrees, usually three days, uh, sometimes three hours, but it's three days, and um, it, it, it trines this at Mercury, which, as I say, is the big announcement of something. Okay. Now, what I was interested in was the fact that Saturn represents the no, and it is the most prominent in the chart, and I believe the most strong. So, the vote is going to go down, the three-day period is going to be invoked, and that we will see what is uh, uh, comes forth uh, uh, after this um, uh, after this uh, vote is over. Let me just come out of there. So this is an experiment to see if we could start to move imaginatively inside of the horoscopic environment, inside that world of symbols and start freely associating them to see if they actually had a fit with the, with, with the actual. Mercury is very powerful in terms of um, uh, politics, is often around. What I didn't show actually, which I think I should move back into the chart here, um, uh, uh, what I didn't show is that about a day after this moon will um, will be sextile to the Neptune, and Saturn moves on to that Neptune, as you can see there. So w what happens is this Neptune is a very strange uh, planet. It's in the eighth house of the chart, and uh, I, I, I see some machinations, some deceptions, some um, some intrigue. I think. Um, chaos or disorder, something unknown is going to come out in about a day. And I often, I often see this Neptune as representing the, the, um, the ideals of the European Union, as if to this kind of whole, 
whole flooding of national identities to, to, to make them into one homogenous mass. I have dealt with Neptune in, in other videos, so I would like to re refer to you to them. But that's also what's going to take place. And so the moon moves as the same one degree or one and a half degrees to this Neptune we'll see represents the eighth house. And um, something when something comes out of the eighth house, it's like coming out from a funeral parlour um, or, or, or something unknown, um, a, a, a kind of mood, or I can't see who this is exactly, but um, this Neptune often, as I say, represent a representative of the EU, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be... Um, um, surprised if we get some announcement from them suddenly uh, changing something or another in order to ease something through but I don't think this will fool anybody okay. so as I say an experiment in um, uh, an imaginative entering into the diagram of the event and that there is an assumption and that's what the experiment is about. There's an assumption that this horoscope is now linked to that event to take place tonight at seven o'clock. And I hope that uh, those people uh, managed to catch this anyway, or even uh, uh, reviewing it afterwards, will be able to see those placements. And, and that's why I've done it beforehand. Uh, to, to, to see if anything can be suggested by the placements and movements of the planets in terms of timing and, uh, and what they have to say. Okay, well, I hope that's uh, uh, be, be an interesting thing uh, for people to see. And um, I'm going to do a, a series on uh, videos on the EU and Theresa May herself and uh, the UK chart as, as well, which uh, is prominent here. Uh, uh, and I'll perhaps talk about some of the psychological dynamics of Brexit and, and uh, all that's going on in the tensions in the country at the moment, which I see basically as a problem or a, a tension between Uranus and uh, Neptune. Neptune wants to suffuse and forget and to go into some kind of ideal, idealism, idealism, and uh, uh, the Uranus wants to stretch out and become independent. As I said earlier, it would be soon to conjoin the MC of the um, European Union chart and we'll see something dramatic happen not, uh, not so many months from now. I can't remember the exact date, but it's not so far uh, when Uranus will move to that second degree and we should see something break through. But as I say, say, always say with Uranus, it's either breakthrough or breakdown. So there it is. See you again.